I'm George Mitchell from AES. I'm going to do a little quick overview of using the AES secondary pickup. And uh, in this case, we're going to hook up to a uh, coil unplug system and we're going to use pickup. Before we get started, there's a few things you probably want to know. First, I'm using the new AES secondary pickup where we terminate it to a banana plug. And what that allows us to do is use different ends. We're going to look at the paddle probe, but our new kit also comes with different clips like your traditional spark plug clip that allows you to connect directly to the spark plug and walk away whereas of course with the paddle probe it's for quick testing we're going to go and tap on top of uh, the plug wire the distributor if it's uh, HEI and uh, the individual uh, coils on coil on plug. Alright before we get connected to the car there's a few things that you're going to want to know. One of the problems with doing coil on plug is, is that there are some systems that you don't have access to the section of the circuit for the coil on plug that will give you a signal. So this is very important, especially if you're new to using a secondary pickup. Because what's going to happen is, is if you don't have confidence in your setup and what you're doing, you're going to think, well, what's wrong? What did I do wrong? Or there's something wrong with the pickup. So when doing secondary, what I recommend is go to a, uh, to a DIS system or a standard ignition, which is easy to get the signal on, and learn to set up and use your equipment. And then once you have the confidence, then go out and do your coil on plugs. So here's what's going to happen. Some of them will not have a signal. Some of them will have a weak signal. Some of them will have a strong signal. And because of this, you can't say, for example, that it's a thousand to one uh, calibration. Because it might be on one system and it might not be in another. So what we're going to do, and I'm not going to get into this detail right now, but what you're going to want to do is, is that you want to look at the burn time, number one, of your signal, and the overall shape, and of course the dwell period. You know, a lot of these circuits have um, uh, a dwell period that is, that is adjusted based on the burn time. So you want to see that full picture, and this probe will get it for you every time if there's a signal present. But again, if you're looking for a voltage calibration, you might not see the same on this car as you would another. So what do you do with that? You do a uh, comparative test from one coil to the next, and you focus on burn time, burn voltage, whatever it is, and the dwell period. So let's go take a look at uh, the Tesla connection to the car. Typically, you're going to be setting up your Pico scope before you connect the Tesla. But I'm going to do it first this time. First thing I want to do is take our ground clip and put it on a known good ground on the car. The reason we do this is that if by chance a secondary spark were to hit the secondary pickup, the circuitry is going to direct that spark down into the ground clip. Now the next thing that we're going to do is, is on this uh, pickup right here, we have two sides. Well in this case I'm going to use the big copper side, which is all insulated, and I'm going to put that up against the top of the coil. I'm doing this first on this car, on this particular cylinder, I can go to the top of the coil and I can kind of wedge it here in place so it will hold into place. Now there's something interesting that I'm also going to show you. When we go to hook up and we get our scope adjusted, you're going to see that the size of the signal is going to depend on a few things. Our actual position of the probe over the coil on plug as well as the amount of tension of the probe uh, paddle to the coil itself. Alright, a quick review. I've already got the paddle probe kind of wedged up on a coil unplugged. Now typically, of course, like I said, you're going to start with your lab scope setup and then you're going to start using your probe. I did this because my goal is to help you understand how to set up your scope and we needed a signal. So now let's take a peek what we have here. I have the test lead for the paddle probe coming into channel A and I had just started up the picoscope. Now, you notice that right now it says waiting to receive data and nothing's taking place. And typically I would like my scope set up so at least something would show up on the display. So let's first get something up on the display before we worry too much about what's going on in detail for the pickup. So if I look down here in my bottom left hand corner, if you don't have a signal happening, this is the first place to look. And notice what I have down here in my trigger setup. First, it shows the trigger on channel B, and I want it on channel A. So we're going to open that and go to channel A. Second, 
if we turn to the left here, you see that it says trigger is on single. I don't want it on single. I want it on auto. Single means that if the trigger requirements are met, it's going to update the display once. And you notice that we do have a display now, but it had not updated when we uh, changed the, from the A, the B to an A. And now that I have it on auto, the display should be updating. But it's not, isn't it? Okay, so there's something else wrong. When it was on single, it turned off the update. So we're going to start the capture again. And now we have a live signal. That's what we're looking for. So again, I'm going to do a quick review because this is very important. You don't want to get stuck on this basic trigger setup. I, when I turned on my scope, in this case, it defaulted to, to input B for the trigger. I changed it to A. It was on sing single. I changed it to auto. And then I started the scope running, and I have a running signal. Now, looking at the signal, if you look closely, you can kind of see that the spike is longer on the bottom than the top. Well, now that I know that, what I'm going to do is I'm going to come up here to the top left and I'm going to open my channel A options. And I'm going to the to the uh, probe selection box, drop, drop down combo box. I'm going to open it up and I'm going to scroll down to the bottom. And I'm going to select secondary ignition inverted. And let's go ahead and close it. And now if we look down here at the bottom of our screen, we're starting to get a little bit better picture. So I'm going to raise this up just a little. And now I'm going to use my bolts and time per division to kind of focus in. So in this case, I'm at, uh, let's see, I'm at negative 5 to 100 kilovolts. So I'm going to come down to negative 3 and 10 kilovolts. And the picture's getting bigger. Next step, I'm going to go to a faster time per division setting instead of 100 milliseconds. You know, we expect a burn time to be 1 to 2 milliseconds in that window. So I'm going to go ahead and go to 2 milliseconds per division. And now we should see it in detail. Now this is very interesting because now that I have the detail, what do I see? I see my dwell period. And what is my dwell period? The dwell period is upside down. So I made the wrong selection. So I'm going to go back to my probe calibration here, and I'm just going to start over. Secondary ignition probe, positive. And look at what we have. It's right side up. I can see my dwell time, and I can see my burn time. So let's take a quick look. Here's where dwell begins. The dwell reaches over. The field collapses in the coil, and we have the... Uh, KV kick and we have the burn voltage, the burn time. Now notice how it's jumping around and it's not clear and defined. This is one of the issues with doing coil on plug. And that's why I say it's important to look at the burn time. And the burn time is going to be from this spike to basically this little character of the waveform where it drops down and then shoots off to the right right there. Now again, notice it's moving around. So what I'm going to do now, and you're not going to see me do this, I'm going to grab the paddle probe and I'm going to reposition it to see if I can get a more steady signal. Alright, look at the change in the signal. And all I have done is press the paddle probe down on the uh, coil just a little bit harder. I've got pressure on it now instead of just sitting there. Now you see how important it is just the position of the paddle probe or of any secondary pickup on coil unplugged to the height of the signal. So now I'm going to come back down here and I'm going to go back to my fives. There we go. Notice how much easier it is to read my burn time now. And notice my dwell. So for advanced scope users, you're going to take a picture of this, you're going to go to the other waveforms and you can compare them. One of the things you're just simply going to do is just take note of that burn time, how long it goes from this point to that point. We're one division right now, so what is that? Two milliseconds burn time and do a comparison. And also do a comparison to your dwell time. Those are two very important dynamics.
Okay, so we just did a little bit of a run and gun setup here for the AES Secondary Paddle Probe and the Pico Scope. Now, you never know what you're going to run into, but think of the basics, get that uh, trigger set up to auto, and you know, make sure your scope's updating, and then make sure you've got a good pressure down on the uh, connection of the probe to the ignition. But here's a few things that you, you really should keep in mind. When you do ignition analysis today, there are so many different types of signals that you're going to get. Overall, it's the same, but the, the ability of the probes to pick up the signals vary sometimes from car to car. So just because the cars you work on all the time look one way doesn't mean that that's exactly what it's going to look like on that new system that you're looking at. So here's the rule of thumb to keep in mind is always relate something that looks unusual whether you use a secondary pickup or anything else to the way the cars run. But this is especially true for secondary. So when you see a signal, comparative analysis is probably more important than the fact that, oh, it doesn't look the same as the last car I looked at. Well, if you do a comparative analysis and they all look the same and the car's running good, that means that it probably is good. So that comparative analysis becomes important. But as you saw, just the pressure of the probe on the coil made a big difference in the way the signal looked. So again, that makes it even more important to compare it to make that relationship to how the cars run. But make sure you try to do a consistent test with all of them. And again, focus on that burn time because if the, the probe is more likely to pick up that accurately and the dwell time than any other dynamic of the uh, ignition signal. So I hope this helps and I hope this gets you started. Soon we'll do more of a detailed analysis of ignition waveform to get you going.